Welcome back. All right, so Tale of Two Cities is on the board right now. Uh, it looks kind of ridiculous to have the big board for this, but if I use the tiny board, it's going to look weirder, isn't it? So David Kampf uh, signs a four-year extension with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Two and a half million dollars, at least almost. The initial reports were two and a half million. Turns out it's 2.4 million. But it's pretty widely being seen as a lot of money for Kampf and for what he brings. And nobody's saying he doesn't have the work ethic. Nobody's saying he's not a really good team player, but it feels like $2.4 million per season for four years is high, uh, when a lot of projections were maybe a two-year extension at $1.5 million per season. So Brad Tree Living spending some money here, and they're going to try to keep Kerfoot as well. But if you're a Leafs fan that's, that was saying after the playoffs, well, we've got to blow things up and do things different, it really looks like Toronto's going to have a very similar lineup to the one that finished out this playoffs. Uh, bunting is going to be hit in the market. I they can't afford to keep bunting, but not going to be a whole lot of changes when you look at the actual team on the ice and those big difference makers. Bunting's the one that's going to exit, and so we'll see what happens from there. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. It is an expensive contract. It is absolutely an expensive contract. On the flip side, Timo Meyer, who of course had the ten million dollar. Uh, qualifying offer. He was allowed to negotiate below that $10 million price point, and he did, and he gets it done. The New Jersey Devils have re-signed Timo Meyer to an eight-year extension at $8.8 .8 million per season. So that's a good chunk of change for Meyer. The team now has $10.2 million left in cap space. They have some holes left to fill. They have some RFAs as well. But look at this top nine. So I just pulled this from Cap Friendly. Uh, this is a ridiculous top nine. So you'd have Brat, Hughes, and Toffoli on the first line. Meyer, Heischer, and Mercer on the second line, and Palat, Howla, and Holtz on the third line. So if Alexander Holtz can come in this year and play and score the way that he has in other leagues, New Jersey's just ridiculously stacked up front. Uh, they're going to have to make sure that their blue line and their goaltending can match up. But yeah, this is going to be ar arguably, I would say, one of the top five offenses in the National Hockey League. And some good work done. Uh, Fitzgerald did a very good job so far. And we're not even to July 1st yet. And we're already looking at a New Jersey team that looks almost ready to go, really. Again, there's some some other players that need to get signed and whatnot. But when you look at the, the main parts of this roster, yeah, they're set. It's a pretty good team. So New Jersey so far winning the offseason. But I'm going to say uh, when, we, when we talk about who does or doesn't win the offseason very often, uh, once the once the games start getting played, the teams that we say, hey, it looks like they won the offseason, once the regular season rolls around, they may not. But New Jersey, of course, coming off of a great turnaround season that put them back in the playoffs, no reason to think this team won't be a bona fide contender next year and use the experience they got this year in order to build towards something better next season. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. If you're a New Jersey fan, how excited are you? If you're a Toronto fan, how scared are you? Or how excited are you if you really like camp and you like what Tree Living's doing? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all your support, I will talk to you again soon.